Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thank you for watching as always. The question is, where is this real estate market going? Are home prices going to change? What's up with interest rates? I'm not really sure. Welcome back to the channel. Mac Daddian from NFM Lending. Hey, Mac. Hey, good to be here, Robert. <laughs> so, guys, Mac and I were talking and, um, uh, you know, I tell everybody this. My crystal ball is broken. <laughs> the batteries have been dead in my crystal ball for quite some time. So we don't know. I guess that's our short answer. You know, we don't know. Right. Um, but there are indicators that tell us different things. And um, so Mac and I were talking about this. Mac, what's up with interest rates? We're pushing 8% right now on conventional loans, which is pretty high for recent history. Uh, what do you think is going to happen in the future? Yeah. So, you know, just, just to retouch, rates right now are pretty close to 8%. It's, you know, it's the highest rates have been since early 2000s. And then again, in the early to mid 90s is where rates are at. Um, you know, we, we went from enjoying uh, pandemic rates of 2 3% to 8% within 17 months, 16 months, something like that. So, you know, a little uh, forward projecting, you know, a, I think, I tend to take a look at a lot of the big investment banks and insurance providers and what they're predicting. Uh, the overall prediction is that we may have an average rate or a low rate in the range of six to six and a half percent by the end of the year next year. And then maybe something in the neighborhood of five to five and a half percent in the year 2024. So now go ahead. Yeah. I'm going to slow you down, brother. Um, so what you just said is potentially we could have interest rates in the next call 12 to 15 months mm -hmm. drop. Now it may not drop right away. It might actually go up before it goes down mm -hmm. is my understanding, but potentially get to a, a point to a point and a half lower than it is right now. Is that what you cool. just said? Correct. Potentially. This is all speculation, guys. Remember that yeah. nobody knows. Well, maybe somebody mm -hmm. does, but we don't know who they are. <laughs> we can only speculate. Yeah. So potentially you see the rates a year or so by the end of 24. That's a pretty, pretty long way off. Maybe being about a point to set. You said it's around six and a half, seven ish. I would say six to six and a half. I think oh, there's a good okay. chance. And primarily, I think it's because of our election that's going to be coming up. OK, so historically leading up to an election, rates start to drop and depending on the current mood of the country, it could go up or down after the election. But generally, whoever is in office, they want to be reelected. And if you have, you know, so true, high unemployment, high interest rates, you know, no confidence, there's a good chance you're not going to get reelected. So what you're going to see and not making a political conversation, but there's a good chance that you are going to see some pressure from the current administration in the same manner that the previous administration put on the Federal Reserve during the pandemic. So I think that's going to play into it. And that is what's going to cause a potential two point drop in rates next year. I 1000 percent agree regardless of who you like or dislike politically is irrelevant. They all play the same damn game in an election year because yep. they want the votes. So it does, I believe exactly what you're saying is true, that at some point in 24, we, at, we may see the rates start to tick downward. Mm -hmm. um, if I had to guess, I'm going to say... Um, late first quarter, early second quarter, and this is just me guessing, to uh, maybe a, a little drop. Um, you agree? Feel differently? What have you read? Yeah, I, I think so because, I mean, ultimately, I think 
last year inflation got as high as you know north of nine percent and the fed has had an inflation target of less than three percent i think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of two two and a half to three percent and at some point we hit i think in june like three percent i think it's back up to three seven four so dave uh, the Chairman has come out on multiple occasions and pretty much said at all costs, we are getting inflation down to this point. Now, uh, we're much lower than we were last year, but all I know is I go to the grocery store. I'm still spending $150, $200 on two people. So even though inflation's down, it hasn't worked its way into the supply chain. So as much as I hate to say it, you know, although I agree and disagree with their tactics because I felt like they were a little late to the game, they almost don't have a choice because even though the inflation numbers are close to where they need it to be, we have not felt it yet in our everyday spending with gas prices, with food, clothing, uh, in everything I see is more expensive. So that's really what their target is. And they're going to get there at all costs. So back to your point, when are we going to see this? I do think the next two quarters are going to be pretty steady. And I don't think we're going to see much of a change in rates until at least end of first quarter next year. Do you think they're going to go up again before that? Well, anyone that's watching the news and is seeing what's going on over in Israel right now, that could play a huge part in if they're going to go up some more. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing is that treasuries right now went down a little bit uh and you know it the relationship between treasuries and interest rates is you know uh, almost an inverse uh, uh movement with both of them so what we're kind of looking out for is you know the backlog of the politics back and forth with what's happening right now in Israel, we don't know what's at play with governments. Mm -hmm. And either war is gonna, I mean, it's already war with what's going over there. But you know, is that going to now extend to us fighting other, you know, what we call superpowers out there. So, you know, let's we better believe there's a lot going on with Iran funding certain groups and Russia and pretty much, you know, the enemies of the United States. What do they have at stake right now with what's happening in Israel? And how is that going to come into play with, you know, uh, causing an it? We have to remember, it's not just a physical war. Always. It's a money war. It's Mm -hmm. it's them raising the price of their goods. So we have to pay more for it. So I think there's a lot of uncertainty right now that could affect rates going up one more time a little more and getting to eight and a half percent, maybe even nine. Or we stay at this eight percent realm for another couple of months. They drop it a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. But it's yeah complicated. Yeah, it is. It is now more than ever. I mean, I think a generation ago it was very different. Um, the world has gotten smaller. The economics of the world today are tied together more than ever. And um, certainly, you know, physical unrest in different parts of the world is, is a frightening thing. Um, but then the way the economics play out and the economies of all these different superpowers are tied together, it's kind of a scary thing, too. And that's why that whole crystal ball doesn't freaking work, because you never really know exactly what's going on. Here's my prediction on real estate values. Let's say you're right, and I believe that you are. I think your crystal ball is probably working with interest rates as we get into 2024. The question then people will ask is, are house prices going to come down? And I would say unequivocally, nope, I don't see them coming down. Uh, unless something major financially happens in this country that, that kind of like COVID, you know, like the, the pandemic kind of threw thing, just changed all kinds of stuff. Um, hopefully nothing like that happens again in the near future. Uh, I don't see home prices changing. We've seen interest rates essentially more than double in the last couple of years. 
and we're still seeing incremental price increases on homes. It is they're not appreciating the way they were three years ago, two years ago, but they're still going up slowly. So, and there's still a lot of people that don't want to sell their homes. So as long as we have a, you know, the simple economics of supply and demand, as long as there is not enough supply and the demand is there, I don't see prices actually coming down, at least in most markets, you know? Well, you know what, too, it's uh, a lot of people left the market, not because they don't want to buy a house for many reasons, higher rates, they don't qualify or they just feel, you know, irritated by the process. But remember, when rates drop, that's going to take the people that were at three and four percent. They can now stomach six percent for that upgrade to an extra bedroom and a bath in a new neighborhood. So what you're going to see is these people that were on the fence about listing their house because rates were high. Now they're going to list their house. OK, now you're entering into the market. More buyers, the people that left the market are coming back as well, too. Yeah. Uh, and also take into consideration average appreciation in New Jersey, I think, is like four or five percent. And then we saw from mid 2020 to end of 2021, I think it was almost 20 percent and 30 percent, 40 percent in some cases. So yeah. although even now that number is coming down a little bit, it's not going to go back down to that starting point. So the second we get another boom, that initial chunk of 20 percent that maybe dropped down to 17 percent, that next boom is now going to push it another five, 10 percent. So that same house that you could have bought for 400 this year, next year you might be buying it for 430. And now mm -hmm. you're buying it against more competition. So that 430 maybe becomes 440 or 450. So while you were waiting to save, you know, 400 bucks a month, 500 bucks a month, now you're paying an extra 50 grand for the house. Yeah, th that's a great point. So let's say, yeah, it's a great point because if homes continue to appreciate, the homes are going up, but the, and the interest rates are coming down a little bit, it's still going to cost you the same, right? Because yeah. if that 400 home becomes 440 or 430 and the interest rates dropped a little bit, buy the freaking house today, right? Because it's going to be the same payment. There's some kind of a, a saying I heard recently, and I've heard it before, you know, when, when is the right time to buy a house? Five years ago. It's always five years ago. You know, not that specifically in this snapshot in time, five years ago was the time, but it's always five years ago because they just appreciate over time. It just mm -hmm. does. You know, we can't control the interest rates. But if you're buying a house and you're OK with it and you you can approve them. Right. And and as a buyer, you're OK with the payment. Buy it. Right. You can afford the house. Enjoy it. Make your life. And then if the rates drop a year or two from now and it makes sense, they'll talk to you and refinance it and drop the payment or pull some cash out or whatever makes the most sense. You know. Here's a simple like calculation when people come to me and say, I'm on the fence. We'll use a four hundred thousand dollar house, for example. Okay. okay. So let's say we're, we're taking out a mortgage on a $400,000 house today at, you know, let's say 8%. And me as a consumer, I say, I want to wait until interest rates are 6% before I buy. Okay. Let's say that takes two years. Okay. At 8% okay. versus the 6%. Let's just say that payment difference is a thousand bucks a month. Just say okay. that, right? Now we're looking at over the course of two years, Okay, you paid an extra $24,000 in interest, right? Now, remember though, that $400,000 house, if it appreciates by just the standard, which you and I both know, it's gonna appreciate by more than that because of how the market is and how this area mm -hmm. is and how majority of areas are in the country because of the yep. lack of housing. Yep. You know, that $400,000 house, 5% appreciation over two years, that $400,000 house becomes 440. Now we're taking right. no other factors into consideration here. If you would have just bought, you're still saving $16,000. If you would have bought today, paid the higher interest for two years and then refinanced two years later. And again, we're not taking the other factors into consideration that two years from now, that 440 might actually be 460, 470 because of bidding wars. You know, how about the mortgage interest tax write off? How about the property taxes write off. 
that you get, yeah. if, especially if you don't have a whole lot of things to write off, right? Those are big numbers. Like that makes a big difference for a lot of people. Yeah. Take it, so take it from me too. I was a serial renter. I just <laughs> liked renting. It was cool. I was like every year, you know, I go to a different building, move to a different place. So like, I really yeah. enjoyed that. And then, you know, I'm 34 years old and I've bought and sold properties as investments, but never my own primary residence. And then two years ago, I, you know, I saw the market. I saw an opportunity. I bought this house. And honestly, Robert, I'll never rent again. It was the greatest decision because there's something, you know, and, and my dad says this because my dad's an immigrant. There's something about owning your own home that is almost like the epitome of like being here in this country and like just being in your yard and uh, there's just nothing like it. Like the air just smells different and the grass smells different and, and you can do whatever you want with the property. And it just, it's brought me joy that I didn't think I could have. And that's almost something I can't even put a dollar amount on it because I spent quite a bit of dollars to make my house what I want it to be, yeah. but it, it is worth every penny and so many customers of mine i'm sure you too you speak to later and they feel the same way so you know while you're looking to save a couple hundred bucks a month like you're missing out on an opportunity of enjoyment that's you know far uh, outweighs just you know a dollar difference over the course of two years it's it's so true um i always tell people that are buying a house like during a buyer's consultation that it's almost like you can't come up with the words to describe that feeling. And it's much fresher for you at this point, which is great than it is for me that, but I still feel it. Like you literally, you come home from a long day of work or whatever it is, and you pull into your driveway mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter whether it's a big, beautiful, grand house or a more modest home. It's irrelevant. It could be a condo. It doesn't really matter. But when you pull in and you park and you go, wow, this is mine. Yeah. Like, this, this is mine to do with what I please, you know? Yeah. And there's no better feeling, uh, especially if you were, I didn't realize you were a serial renter. That's funny. <laughs> Never thought about it, I guess, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but it's there's there's something special about about owning a home or owning you know whether it's a, it doesn't matter condo townhome detached it's irrelevant owning your own place rather than paying rent and that's coming from a landlord i'm also a landlord and yeah. you did your share of investing yeah but i still think that you know it's a it's a wonderful experience for most people and there are some wonderful financial benefits as well from tax write offs to appreciation and and it's the single greatest wealth building tool that exists is purchasing a home. Yeah. Mac, thank you as always for joining us today. Pleasure uh, as always. Thanks, Robert. Guys, if, you, um, if you guys want to get in touch with Mac and his team, their contact information will be below in the notes on YouTube. If you want to get in touch with us, same thing. If you would like our two teams to collaborate and help you buy a home here in Southern New Jersey, we would love to help you. Please like this video, share this video, and please subscribe to our channel. It would really mean a lot to us. Have an awesome day.